Welcome everybody to another edition of the Football Huddle. A uh, short edition because this is actually recording this on uh, Wednesday uh, because it's Easter week. So I know everybody's ready to get their Easter ba uh, Easter baskets coming up. But hey, we got some Easter presents for you. More football to talk about, right? On the Football Huddle. But before we go into the states and our different beat writers as they talk about what they are writing about, we got to give a plug a couple of sponsors. The, the ones that make it possible here at Gridiron Football in order to do shows like this, right? The Football Huddle. Uh, first of all, Mississippi State Guard. Appreciate everything that they do for us here at Gridiron Football. Uh, if you want more information on the Mississippi State Guard, you have to go to msstateguard.org. msstateguard.org is the website. Also, another sponsor, Ultimate Apparel. Man, we had some nice uniforms. In fact, in the banner uh, behind me, you can see uh, that magazine cover. Those were actually our bowl game players from this past year. And the blue and red uniforms, which are nice, by the way, that was provided by Ultimate Apparel. So go, if, you, if you're a team and you want some nice gear, or what is the word, drip now, right? You want some nice drip? Go to Ultimate Apparel. Dot, dot com. So this is actually one of our jerseys from our first annual junior high All-American game. It's with the East team, right? It looks really nice. And the East team, actually this is the winning team in the first ever uh, junior high All-American bowl game. So uh, give a shout out to Terrence. He does an excellent job of making these uniforms happen. Uh, so appreciate Terrence and we're excited to see what this year's uh, version is going to be of these bowl game jerseys, both the 7th, 8th grade and senior game. Uh, for all your, uh, your gear, go to www.ultimateapparel.com. And then finally, uh, our newest uh, sponsor, the Johnson Law Group. Uh, really, excellence and hope and action is their motto. And we really appreciate Mr. Willie uh, for all his of his support. I think he's our number one fan by now, by far. Uh, he's really into everything we're doing at Green Island Football. And I would put him with any top trial lawyer in the nation. So, you know, it happens every now and then. You get in an accident. If, it, if that happens, well, you got to contact Mr. Willie, right? Uh, so the number is 225-717-7070. That, again, is 225 225- 717-7070. So appreciate all of our sponsors here at Gridiron Football. Well, we're about to start. Uh, the football here huddle will get down to business. And, you know, let's let's start with Louisiana because, I mean, everybody wants to tune about Louisiana because they're the best state. So everything else we ever want to talk about, that's all good. But really, I think the first couple minutes of the show, they just want to listen about Louisiana and turn it off so, because, you know, Louisiana is just, just the best state. In Alabama. Yeah, Louisiana and then Alabama. I, yeah, that, that, that's the word. I, I, it's Louisiana and then everybody else for me. Uh, but, you know, that's just how it goes. But there's been a lot of great content here at GridironFootballUSA.com. We have a lot of beat writers. So, really representing Louisiana since uh, I'm the only Louisiana beat writer here. I'll talk to you a little bit about what's going on in the boot, as we say. Um, so, obviously, a lot of LSU content. I cover LSU, um, but I still have cover Louisiana high school football, right? Uh, because, really, by per capita, is one of the top, if not the top state in the entire country when it comes to football. But there was a lot of really great content that I've got a chance to write about. And a lot of it's like guys on the rise. Uh, because, for example, Catholic High, right? Uh, you had Emory Jones who went to Catholic High. He's, he's a star at LSU. He started last year as a freshman. And then there's another guy that's looking like he's going to be pretty good himself too. His name is Irvin Smith. And Irvin Smith... You know, I'm actually graduated from Catholic High, so I, I know a lot about their program. If you get a chance to start for Catholic High as an underclassman, as a sophomore, you're pretty good. And so Irvin Smith is going to be one of those guys that's on the rise, go, uh, approaching his junior season. He's actually the only returning offensive lineman starter that's coming back from Catholic High. So wow. he's definitely going to be the leader. Mm -hmm. And he's, only, he's still an underclassman. He's only going to his junior year. Um, but... Man, he actually came to one of our camps. You know, I actually got a chance to see him as one of the standouts at one of our Grand Island Football League camps uh, earlier this year. And, man, he really impressed. I know Andy got a chance to really work a lot with him and a lot of the other linemen, which I was impressed with. Um, so, man, he's about, what, 62 right now, 270 pounds, 63. Uh, he's about 6'3 right now, so he's still growing. He's still getting better. Last year was his first year of really starting varsity action. So this is a guy to keep an eye out for because 
he is going to be one of the top linemen when it comes to senior year. He's going to be one of the top linemen in his class. Now, there's another guy I want to talk about real quick, uh, Rijon Zeno. He's a running back for Jennings High School. Uh, if y'all are familiar with Jennings High School, they produce a lot of really good running backs. Um, I think a name rings a bell, a uh, pretty good football family, the Etienne's, right? Yeah. Yeah. They got Travis Etienne, mm -hmm. you got Trevor Etienne. They both played at Jennings High School, but it's not just the Etienne, Etienne's anymore. They got this running back named uh, Ray John Zeno, and he actually started a lot last year as a sophomore. He's going to his junior year. And uh, Coach Phelps got a chance for his last season. He's been the coach for, I don't know, about 30 years, it seems like, at uh, Jennings High School and got a chance to coach him. And uh, he's actually a really – he's a stud. I mean, he went to one of our – it's another guy that actually went to one of our camps, a ground football league camps, and he really showed out. Uh, I'm super excited what he can do. He's already getting some attention from a lot of colleges already. He's, he's got 4-4 four, four speed. Um, he's got everything you look for. He's got the athleticism, the burst, the speed. Uh, so Jennings, they're really kind of making themselves known as like RBU uh, in Louisiana for high school football. So that's the name for this upcoming season. For all your viewers out there, Ray John Zeno, keep an eye out for him. But we still got plenty of content. Uh, that's just a sneak peek, a peek of some of the content I've got a chance to write about here at GranadaFootballUSA.com. And also a sneak peek coming up, too. We just announced our first bowl game commit to as well. So go to gridironfootballusa.com for that. And we have some more invites uh, and actually they come from Louisiana. So keep an eye on that. That's actually going to be on the website later this week. So that's my spill, you know, Louisiana high school football. But, you know, I think they, they got the gist of how great Louisiana is. So let's go to another state, right? Let's see what we got. Uh, let's go with the state of Mississippi first. And I'm going to put my man Bailey on the spot. So, you know, Louisiana's good, but what, what's going on about Mississippi? Well, uh, it's better than Louisiana. Oh, okay. I can definitely say that. And also, I don't like how you just pinned me with uh, two Texas right <laughs> after me. So I'm going to have to uh, show out for Mississippi. Um, I brought two high schools um, to talk about today. A 3A high school located in Fayette, Mississippi, Jefferson County High School. Um, they're under head coach Roderick Holmes. Uh, he's there for, or, excuse me, he's been there for five years now. Um, last season they actually won eight games and that would be their season record for a single season. So um, things are looking up there at Jefferson County. He brought a bunch of players to my attention. Um, so we can go ahead and get into those. Their number to starting quarterback um, Jabari Watkins is listed at 6'1", 175 pounds. He's a true dual threat quarterback. Um, he'll be a senior this upcoming season for the Tigers. Uh, so he's already been there for three years of experience starting. He, um, once again, has one more remaining. Last season put up 2,005, sorry, 2,052 yards uh, passing with 24 touchdowns and only six interceptions. Um, rushing the ball, he put up 500 yards and a rushing touchdown as well. So kind of do it all dual threat. Their running back is JJ Claiborne. He is six foot, 215 pounds. So kind of big for a uh, running back. He carried the ball 118 times for a little bit under a thousand yards with 10 touchdowns as a junior. He. Um, I think got a small injury at the end of the season. He missed the last two games, but he definitely would have been rushing for a thousand yards. Um, they have a big receiver, Luke Bolin, who's six three, hundred and eighty five pounds. Big target. Yes, he's uh, already receiving some community college offers in Mississippi. He's uh, planning to be a big impact this next upcoming season for um, Jefferson County. He had 11 touchdowns last season and everything I saw from him he's just not afraid to go up and hot point a ball and double coverage and just he's really the type of receiver that you want on your team. Um, moving on to the defensive side for Jefferson County they have a defensive back DeAnthony Miller who is nicknamed Mr. Seatbelt. Okay, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's they an interesting fairly, name. He locks down everybody over there. Um, he started nine games as a freshman for them, making over 30 tackles and three interceptions. So pretty impressive young star for Jefferson County. Um, then last for them, I have an outside linebacker, Jaquan Collins, who's six foot, 100, 
or 215 pounds, sorry. And as a sophomore, he put up 77 total tackles with two tackles for loss. He's going to be a big impact on the defense for Jefferson County next year as well. Okay. Um, moving on now to Germantown High School. It's uh, in my hometown of Madison, Mississippi. So shout out Madison. It is a 7A high school. Um, their head coach is Russell Mitchell. He took the job in 2022, so he's kind of new to the job. Um, their last season, I think they went about six and six, maybe seven and five. So middle of the 7A class, but they're hoping to bring that up next year. Um, they have one impressive offensive lineman who is 6'4", 300 pounds, Wade wow. Estes. He's already getting big Division I uh, offers, and he's on their powerlifting team, everything that you want off of, out of an offensive lineman, so he should be big impact at the next level. Well, that's very impressive. And I like that nickname, by the way, Mr. Yeah, Seabell. Yeah. It's yeah. like, buckle up, because it's going to be a long day when you go up exactly. against them, right? Exactly. Right. So it looks like a lot of things going on in Mississippi. Uh, let's uh, make a transition to, uh, let's say, Texas. And I'm going to start off with uh, John right here, uh, John 4. And, uh, and John, tell me a little bit about what's going on in uh, Texas. Yeah, so uh, again, my name is John for White, and I cover the central area of Texas and part of the east, eastern part of Texas, so anything on the I-35 that's not Dallas is kind of my area. So I'm going to just highlight three players I think are going to, you know, one's a, one of them's going to make an impact in college level, one's already have a couple offers, and one's about to get the offer, so just want to highlight these, guys, these two guys. So the first guy I'm going to talk about is Jackson Bays. He's a quarterback out of Bernie High School in Bernie, Texas, which is 20 minutes outside of my hometown of San Antonio, Texas. He's a multi-sport quarterback. He plays baseball. He's really good at that. I mean, he also threw for over 3,500 yards and 53 touchdowns. Wow. Which, That's a big number. You know, in the best state of Texas and for high school football, if you throw a 53 Second best, but yeah, I get what you're saying. Uh, <laughs> agree, agree and disagree, but... Uh, I mean, if you throw 53 touchdowns, no matter where, no matter in any classification in Texas, you're pretty good. So, mm -hmm. like, and Bernie, he led them to the state championship. They lost to a really good China Spring team, which I, I wrote about in one of my articles. So, you know, if you wanted to check that out later. Okay, the, like the tease. At the website. Uh, which is? Gridiron, gridiron Football <laughs> USA. Uh, com. Yep. Uh -huh. So, you, you can check that out. But, I mean, yeah, you know, Bernie, they're returning all their guys, and for Jackson Bay to be throwing a rock again for that offense, he's all, he was only a sophomore as well, so he's gonna have a he's gonna have a really good high school career in college. Gonna start taking notice. Okay. The next guy I want to highlight is Ty Anthony Smith. He's a linebacker out of Jasper, Texas. He's a three-star linebacker. He's already had offers from. Alabama, LSU, Texas A&M, wow. and he just picked up an offer from Notre Dame last month. I mean, 6'2", 200 pounds, he's, you're, he's everything you want as a linebacker, averages 11 tackles per game, he diagnoses a play real quickly, he flies to the ball, he's also very versatile and really speedy, which makes sense since the two linebackers he looks up to in the NFL right now are, you know, Micah Parsons, arguably yeah. one of the best defensive players in the league. And then Isaiah Simmons, who's very slept on, in my opinion. Yeah, he really is. Really underrated. Very underrated. And then the last guy I want to talk about is uh, Alex Green. He is a wide receiver out of Hutto High School in Hutto, which is outside of Austin, Texas. Six, six foot, 180 pounds. He has offers already from Western Kentucky and Arkansas State, which are – they got two really good offenses every year, no matter what, for wide receivers. I mean, he had 43 receptions, 900 yards, and nine touchdowns last year for Hutto, which played in a really tough classification of football. 6A, you know, top classification in te Texas, arguably one of the best classifications in the country. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he runs a f four, a four, five, six, forty. Great route runner, great in the red zone. He's just only getting better as well. So this is th that, those are the three guys I really just wanted to highlight from the great state of Texas. Yeah, there's a lot of talent right there from Texas, definitely, John. And uh, one more time, what is that website again? GridironFootballUSA.com. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There we go. Knock it down the second time. That's right. Uh, and then uh, yeah, we're gonna go. Might as well stay in the 
stay in Texas, right? Uh, so, Charlie, what you got for us? Uh, first off, my name is Charlie Baker. I'm the beat writer for the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex, and also I cover some of the East Texas area. John Four, I'm, I'm sorry, man. They, they do a lot better in the Metroplex. Um, <laughs> so, first off, in the Metroplex, I got a DeSoto High School. Um, very prestigious school in the Metroplex. Yes. They're coming off of a state championship against Austin Vandergriff. Uh, their head coach is Claude Mathis, who is also he coached around the college ranks. He coached at SMU for the running backs. He also coached at the University of Houston. Okay. So uh, DeSoto, I mean, they've produced James Prochet, who's mm -hmm. now in the league, Von Miller, we all know. You know yeah. And uh, we know this name, Ed Ingram. Yeah, right, right. So, um, they, they pump out talent every year. They're really good in the Metroplex. And, um, you know, some of these kids right here, the quarterback, DJ Bailey, uh, mm -hmm. I got to talk to the kid. Yeah, I saw that. He, um, 45 passing touchdowns, five rushing touchdowns in his state championship year. Uh, very big team leader. Coach Math is very high on this kid. Um, he can sling the rock, and he told me he's going to work on some versatility. He's going to run with his legs more. Okay. His senior year, so... Very good senior coming in. Uh, one of the big prospects on their team is Tiger Ridden. He's okay. an all-state running back. He flies off the tape. Um, he, Coach Math has actually told me, and we're he's gonna he might be the best running back in the class next year. Wow, class of twenty-five kid. He's already got Texas, USC, Michigan. He's he might he might have a big senior uh, soft, uh, junior year for, okay. for Desoto. Uh, then another kid for the defensive side, Mario Buford, a corner, long, fast kid. He's already got Penn State, Arkansas, Colorado, a wow. very big piece for this defense. So uh, that's it for DeSoto. Uh, for the East Texas area, I got Longview High School. It's a big name. It yep. is a huge East Texas powerhouse. Um, they were a state champion back in 2018. Uh, moving to East Texas, a big the, they have a huge support staff. It, it's a big high school out there. Uh, they're coached by John King. Um, their running back is Taylor Tatum, mm -hmm. all-state running back. He's a class of 24 kid. He's got almost any offer you want. He's one of the top kids in the class of 24. Uh, he's got Georgia, Alabama, you and name so it. on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you can go down the line. Uh, he's 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 hungry for a big senior year. Um, Buda Garrett on the defensive side. I actually talked to the kid. It, his he has one of the best tapes I've seen. He just flies off the screen. He can do whatever you want as a safety. Uh, he he almost plays like a linebacker. He's very uh, you know sideline to sideline speed. Mm -hmm. Very good kid. Uh, he has Arkansas State, Texas State, other schools like that. Uh, then my last kid for him, or for Longview, is uh, Willie Nelson. Very dynamic kid. Coach King was very high on him. He's one of your dynamic kids that can play corner and safety. Um, Coach King said, college-wise, this kid could really be a really good safety. He um, he played a lot of corner for them, but um, he's he actually is committed to uh, Oklahoma State. So does he play country music too? He is. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't believe so, but you never know in Texas. Yeah, so. Willie Nelson, you know. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So, uh, you can check more of that out in the uh, grid, uh, on gridironfootballusa.com and uh, keep up with the Texas schools a little more. Yeah, and I know you mentioned Tiger, so I hopefully, uh, you know, LSU can, uh, with that name, you know, that that's a good opportunity there. He's got the talent as well. Uh, so, yeah, we got two guys here in Texas, but we're also here to introduce our first-time uh, guest here, yes. you know, one of our uh, beat riders, uh, so representing the state of Alabama. Okay. So uh, introduce yourself to the yes. ground football audience. So my name is Maya D'Souza, and I cover the state of Alabama. Um, I can say we saved the best for last. Oh. So... <laughs> um, so I noticed Alabama, they produce a lot of great talent out there, big names. Um, I had the honor in interviewing head coach Jeff Kelly for Sterling High School. We have uh, Cordell Flott, who's now playing for the Giants from there. Yep, went to LSU. Yep. Went to LSU. So they produce a lot of big, notable um, alumni, big names. Um, coach Jeff Kelly built that program up for 13 years. Um, he's been there for 20 years, but as the head coach, 13 years. Um, they're a 6A school. And there are the 2022 state champions, so I was 
it was an honor to be able to see like how his philosophy was able to get him to that point with that team. Um, he does have big name players. You have wide receiver Ryan Williams. He's a six foot, 160 pound, 160 pounds, sorry, sophomore. Um, he led the team with four touchdowns in the state championship against Mountain Brook. Wow. Um, so he's a great receiver. He was the Alabama Player of the Year, Gatorade's Alabama Player of the Year. Um, he was Mr. Alabama Football Award. So Ryan Williams, he really is a big receiver for um, Sarah High School. And then in partner with his QB, KJ Lacey, y'all probably heard about him. He's another big player, the mm -hmm. next Bryce Young for Sarah Land, Alabama. Um, he has multiple offers. I'm talking any school, like you mentioned, any school you think of, you name it, he has it. Um, 6'1", 180 pounds. So he's a dual threat for Sarah Land and big names. So I would keep an eye on that. On the defensive side, you have defensive tackle Antonio Coleman, class of 2025. He's measuring at 6'2", 265 pounds for Sarah Land. Um, multiple offers. So that's one thing I know about Sarah Land. They're very, it's a strong program, mm -hmm. great head coach, um, big name players. Yeah, yeah, that sounds really good. So that's a lot of talent there in Sarah Land. Yes. Um, so my next school I have for y'all is Daphne High School. Yep. Great coach, um, Coach Kenny King. Was, it was an honor speaking with him as well. Um, so you have Nick Clark, who great kid. He is a 5'8", 210, class of 2024, right, running back for Daphne High School. He's described as a heavy hitter for the program. Um, his dream school is Alabama, and he was just on an official visit with Alabama, so that was that was great. Um, I would say another big name to look out for is Tyler Duran, 6'3", 265 pounds. Defensive tackle, he's been playing since a sophomore for Daphne High School. Um, all state, all county, all region, so Daphne, I would say keep an eye on those people, on those kids. And then um, I just wanted to point out Payne and Floyd out of Hewitt Trustville. Um, okay, okay. So that, I spoke with their head coach, Trustville, uh, spoke with the head coach. We have notable alumni from LSU, Armani Goodwin was there from Hewitt Trustville, mm -hmm. they're a seven A school. Um, so like I said, Payne and Floyd, he's a class of 2024, QB for the Huskies, standing at 5'11", weighing 180 pounds. Um, he's all state as well. Many offers. He's a strong kid. He really excels in his craft as a winner. He's a team leader. Something I've noticed about Floyd. Um, his dad is his coach as well, so it was pretty cool. That's cool. It was cool seeing that. Um, but you know, he's very proud of him as his son and his coach. Uh, Riggs Dunn is a safety for Trustful as well. Five eleven, one hundred eighty pounds. He's a third year starting safety, and he excels on the field in returning punts and kicks and you know he excels in full athleticism full speed so all these players are just really notable and set out to Alabama. Yeah so it was really cool to hear I know you mentioned Nick Clark and actually mm -hmm. he was actually a recent uh, 7 on 7 that we were at at Southern University and actually approached us and said that he loved the article and uh, oh. that she wrote about so that was really cool to seeing that. that we got a chance to interview him uh, because they they went made their way to Southern to try to compete uh, right. from Alabama. So for for more of your content, Maya, what where should uh, your readers go to? GridironFootballUSA.com. Yeah, great job, <laughs> great job. Well, great job, guys. Uh, as always, coming in, uh, make sure to keep up with what they're doing because they do an excellent job for us at GridironFootballUSA.com. And and also, we're going to have some more information because uh, Bailey here, he's actually going to be covering Big Ten country, right? Yep, uh, yep. So a lot of Michigan, Ohio, Moving Illinois. Up to Great Lakes. Yep, yeah, that's right. That's right. Yep. So more, more coverage. Uh, you know, yeah. keep up with Bailey's stuff. He's doing an excellent job. And, and really everybody uh, here because we're GridironFootballUSA.com. So we're trying to be a national brand, right? We're trying to promote. Our newsletter right here, yep. the football huddle. This is like the video version of it. Well, this is like the or digital. We have a our newsletter version of it as well. We have a digital version too. So in order to go to that, just go to GridironFootballUSA.com, and you can't really miss it because you go in the top. You're going to see newsletter at the top. So click that button, and it's going to direct like direct you right to that. So a lot of content. We have a lot from this past newsletter. We have a lot of Baton Rouge uh, specific players and teams. And we also have some LSU coverage too that I wrote about. But you know, you never know with, with the football huddle because we're going to have more national coverage as well with each passing uh, football huddle that we produce. 
Also, um, make sure to go to our website, gridironfootballusa.com. We had a lot of interviews this past week. We were at Southern University for the DR7, a king of the boot. Uh, Bailey was there, and we actually had a lot of... Uh, Jose did an excellent job with the interviews. Jose, uh, Nick was there, or my parents, our whole, whole staff almost uh, was there uh, this past week. So make sure to... Uh, Ellis... Too. Um, so make sure to check us out because we have a lot of interviews. We interviewed, I think, like close to 130 interviews that we had that weekend. It was really cool to see. So more of our content, you can make sure uh, like, subscribe, share on YouTube, or on Facebook, you know, Instagram, you name it, we're there. We're pretty much all football all the time, right? So we're pretty much everywhere. Uh, GridironFootballUSA.com. So you know, check out everybody's content. Uh, we have nine articles a day across the country, and that's a lot of content to go through. So uh, go through. So go to gridironfootballusa.com. Appreciate our sponsors again. Uh, we can't do it without the Mississippi State Guard, also from the Peril and the Johnson Law Group for everything that they they do. Without them, we wouldn't have uh, gridiron football. So we appreciate those three companies for for backing us up and and really uh really helping us. You know, it's a team game, and they really help us uh, carry the load as well. So guys, appreciate it. You know, hope all of y'all had a uh, happy Easter as well. Um, so, yep, Charlie, you know, Bailey, John, and then Maya doing a great job for the first time. So, uh, yeah, it was a great time to be on, talk football with y'all, catch up with what's going on with the Grand football world. Um, but we'll be back here next week. That's the beauty of it because this is going to be every single week. So make sure to go and just – Every Friday, now this is a little weird week because of Easter, yeah. but mm -hmm. every Friday we're going to be live with Gridiron Football on our YouTube channel, so at around 12.30. So make sure to keep up with all these guys are doing every Friday on the football huddle as we huddle up for the football huddle. And then every Wednesday we'll have the chase with Jace too. we talk about some LSU football, talk about what's going on in the spring, uh, in the summer, what's going on with LSU football. So uh, we'll check that show every Wednesday as well. Well, thanks a lot, guys. Uh, yeah, excellent yeah, job. Yeah. Thanks to our mysterious cameraman in the back. <laughs> Not going to give away who it is, uh, but appreciate everybody. So once again, for Charlie, for Bailey, for John, for my, I'm Jay Sojourn, Granada Football, saying so long. Have yourself a good Easter week, and we'll see you all next week, next Friday, on the Football Huddle.